<laughs> oh, we gotta revisit that someday. Oh, the beauty and wonder. Just pure imagination. Yes, that's. I imagine us nailing it one day. <laughs> well, make our imagination to reality. <laughs> people think you guys just uh, auto pilot this stuff, but they spent Ooh. a good hour <laughs> well i think there was more than an hour where you're just looking for the right chord or two yeah i think it would be a lot easier on guitar because i have access to all these bass notes mm. that could have did it would make more sense to what your ears are hearing yeah it's the, that's the challenge with figuring things out on ukulele you gotta make figure out what what works and just make do with Pretty much any instrument. It's just that it's more fun with the uke. <laughs> yeah. You gotta. And it's these like certain things are implied. And... Yeah. I think, I think it's a reason, hard thing. Like, yeah. Like oh, you can play this chord, but then you gotta imagine a, a, a D bass on there. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that. The bass can throw it off. You know. You also get these nice voicings that are stacked right next to each other, though. Yeah. Um, it's like there's sounds you can get. On an ukulele that you can't necessarily get on guitar, which is cool. Oh yeah, like yeah. No, or this is my favorite like D major chord. It's not really a D major, but it's nice. It's like a D sus. It's like a D four, suspended four, four major seven, time. or D major seven sus four or something. <laughs> yeah, I like playing like this kind of. You can do it on gu guitar, but you generally wouldn't. I just realized that, like this, this chord ha doesn't have an F sharp in it, like normal. Yeah, I yeah. think that's what makes it sound more major. When you take that out, it's like, oh, now you can really hear more of like it's relative minor. You know? What what, yeah. what what are the some of the things that um, make you like that song? I think it it is a. Uh song that is associated with a movie i've watched a million times yeah but just the the magic of the melody and the chords it's like the it's like a disney piece you know how there's so many moving chords in the is there anything the unique song. to the movement <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we've we haven't really researched and like looked at it on paper even how like where the move uh, movements are going, because then it goes sharp and flat, and like that to give it that really dreamy. Oh yeah, and plus too, it's like there's sections in the song where they're, it's like modulating to another key and then coming back. Yeah, to just the original. Like when we go back into the, when we go back, we're supposed to go back to the, the D. Yeah. Major seven, <laughs> right? is, we'll see. But then there was a. C yeah, sharp. I was like. And it's like, because I remember hearing F, I remember hearing these two, or before it goes to the, yeah, and then it, from here, like this, yeah, I mean, it's like, what? <laughs> and I think that, uh, that also shows the limitation of the ukulele, which, you know, gotta make do with what you have, and, uh, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> all you do is just take out the notes that you don't want and keep all the good ones. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine like a modern piece being this weird and experimental like that? Yeah. It's like doesn't really happen. I I kind of want people to play that kind of stuff again because Disney mm. kind of sh shied away from doing that kind of got the poppy. musicals. Yeah, it's all yeah. pop. It's super pop. It's really pop. <laughs> like the the whole. Um, And then the oh yeah that and then <laughs> pretty brilliant composers yeah. who wrote that piece anyway what was it show that last and that kind of diminished run you did at the end that was oh cool. the whole tone kind of what is that that's awesome just uh one step 
up, oh, all the way up. Steps, yeah. What song has that in the intro? There's a, I feel like that's like in a number of like older songs. Such a dreamy way. Is that, is that within the uh, whole tone scale? I think, I, I don't even know for, for sure, but it sounds like it, right? <laughs> it does. Do you guys know when you're like soloing over that, like what scales you use and stuff? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think like, I don't, I'm actually not. I don't think of scales when we're soloing. Yeah, I think it's think of the the melody, right? Yeah, yeah. like thinking scales is 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 well, great key, to figuring out the do melody. Do you think key or? Um, sometimes I chuck the key out of the door too. Yeah, because like, when you're thinking key, you all you're doing is thinking of. The notes in that particular scale then you're stuck thinking scales so you're just thinking sometimes. melodies around i for me it's like i would focus more on what's with all the movements that are really happening because then that can open up more doors to ideas like for example if you're going from like a to a, a you know a diminish for me this would be like a g major seven i'm gonna go to diminish so just that those two chord Changes right there instead of going, um, you know, when you go to this chord, you have all these other notes that normally ain't in that key, like these two. There's an F natural and a G sharp in here. So those those actually open up doors to leading to wherever you want to go for the next, uh, I guess you could say, phrase of the solo you're doing. So all this like chromatic stuff can be applied you can even do the, I don't know the name of the, the scale, but you can do it. It's a half step, whole step, half step, whole step on so, that. Oh. So a half step, whole step, and then half, half step? step, whole step, half step. I don't know if that's the right application for it, but you can do that. And I remember oh, yeah, Gilbert for... showing me that, and then Ian was explaining to me. He's like, "Oh, that's a real scale. You can play it over it, these things." Over diminished, usually, huh? Or what? Mm -hmm. I would say because like, uh, you could. Because I remember the Depending shape. Where you're starting? If from. you're playing with that, it... something like that. Hmm. Half step, half step, full step, half step. What is it? Some scales play differently ascending to descending. Is like, that melodic oh, minor? Like melodic minor. Oh. Jazz melodic minor? I didn't know there was a difference like in classical. Uh, <laughs> the ascending and descending are the same, but if it's melodic minor and jazz, ascending is one way, coming back up is another way. I'm yeah. like, what? It's like, it's like which side major. of the street do you walk it de <laughs> in Japan? It depends on what city you're in. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're in Tokyo. Oh, you walk on the right side. Like, wait, hold on. I just came from Osaka. We walk on the... Wait, I think yeah. it's... Yeah. It's... Swap. I was just watching this video. I think is, uh, I think he's a pretty well-known jazz teacher or guitarist. He's like, oh, here's a major minor. I'm like, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How does that... <laughs> <laughs> That's like, a major minor. What notes aren't in the scale? And he's like, "Go oh, here's the here's the what you can play over that." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm not there yet." Yeah, you I are. Figure this out. <laughs> like these. What chord is this again? That's Something. a weird chord. Yeah. It's like a. Can I see? It's like a. It's like you're playing a play a G, but then you sharp the. You sharp the um. Oh. Oh, okay. That almost sounds like a like a major minor seven. Yeah, there's a something something flat fifth. <laughs> something, yeah. Just so much like Yeah, I think um I know for sure I gotta brush up on my like, music theory. Oh, that was, that yeah, was the yeah. vamp that Uncle Brian and Holly was playing. I was like, okay. I know, it's just like, it's just chromatic all the way. I'm just trying to figure 
was like, what do I play? I guess all those notes are correct. <laughs> so... Every time we get Petros, we're just like, oh, my God. And it's like, oh, this is the best one. And the next yeah, one, yeah. oh, this is the best one. <laughs> it's always, uh, it's not always the same, which is something I always like looking forward to. Yeah. It's like, you know, you have cars that come out and every year you expect like, oh, you know, there's these new features and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that. You don't want to keep producing the same car yeah, Lexus. Just gets... These, like, even more so, it, it, like, when I play them, it sounds like I'm listening inside the instrument. Yeah. This one, um, we kind of cheated. Oh, I did. Um, I put on a thicker D string because it was... It uh, kind of had the Thomas stick, wasn't, like... It was nice, but I wanted a little more boom on it. So... But that's still not as much boom if, if you go to like a 33 on it. That's like the 30 or what? This is a 35. Oh. Here. Yeah. I should have put a 33 because I think it's, it might be too heavy. I think it sounds n nice. Yeah. I thought that was a lighter. Tension wise, like feeling, well, as you're picking, the top string is a little on the stiffer side. So probably, um, probably a 33 would be better. Mm. The 35 is what Joel uses for his hard tension. The 33 is what you'll get on like a um, Kolo Aho baritone set. That one is perfect. Yeah, I should have did that. I mean, it depends on the instrument. You know, every instrument kind of wants, in my opinion, wants to lean a certain way. Like some yeah. might be best with even just a 30, but mm. I guess your personal preferences in there too yeah after uh yeah, people always ask what is the best string what is the best this and that? Like, all the time it's it's up to you it's not you know i have i'll have my opinion mm -hmm. and on some days it's different <laughs> yeah. some days i feel like ah, oh, i want to play a lighter tension set i mean or, you know, i appreciate them like um mm -hmm. wanting to know our opinion you know that's always nice but then i think it's like really fun trying out strings yeah you know but, looking for the perfect set for your it's ukulele. like different lenses on a really good camera body yeah. you know yeah just bring out different you know i've i've been uh looking at at getting a leica camera that i've been drooling over for years and it's like when i look at the you know i look at like my images in in video and it's like good but then it's like that's just like, oh my goodness, you know, the cinematic. <laughs> I can't imagine because I always look at our videos. I'm like, well, no, can it get better? oh <laughs> please, <laughs> settle you make down. This There's look beautiful. definitely levels to this thing, you know, and Suck that's up. it's that way with everything. And I think of Petros in that way that like, you can have a great instrument. I've got great cameras, but then there's another level. The nuance <laughs> yeah. of something no, that is there's thousands a, of dollars. There's a top music. tier to this yeah. thing. That, like, really, it's like quite the experience as you can afford. I can't imagine. I'm, I'm really curious to see oh. what it, like, well, can do, I guess. I, I'm pretty sure, you know, I mean, it's just like more cinematic, more, you know, all the color science, all of that. But it's the same thing with instruments. It's like, it's hard for people to understand, like, how do you get better than this $2,000 uke? Well, it's subtle, but it's there. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> get an $8,000 uke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people might look at the difference in the cameras that, you know, I'm like, obviously, there's did not see as much of a difference. But, yeah. you know, it's like, I guess that's what it is to, like, appreciate the finer things. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about cars earlier and there's like the there's luxury cars right and then there's the, the super luxury cars like um aston martin right like that kind of stuff like there are hundreds of thousands uh, of dollars more but there is a difference between you know like yeah the, and a lot of times it's not a difference you're gonna see in specs it's like whoa this tesla experience. can go yeah. faster quicker yeah but that's not you know and also it goes into like the place and person that's building it and spending the time and the testing that they put into it and all of these kind of things that it gets beyond like a factory made experience into yeah. like 
somebody actually crafted this thing meticulously like that yeah. like, really put their heart into it. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing when you get to that, with, you know, with anything, with watches or, you know, I mean, there's like mm -hmm. all of these different, like knife making or, you know. Yeah, my friend, uh, I, I could never understand I, why he was so into knives and stuff. He's like, they're all they're all just different. They feel different. And like, I did try a really expensive knife, extra $400 for this knife is like, it's it's a pretty big difference i mean i bought a 300 hundred dollar knife in japan that i love man just like cutting through butter, yeah. oh dude it's just <laughs> you cut through an onion like it's butter it's it's amazing but then you know i there was like 1200 hundred dollar knives there and you know fifteen like hundred dollar ones right too, yeah. yeah but you know at some point you're like okay well I, uh, i'm not actually a chef so <laughs> 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 but you can feel like one if you have like no i mean would, hey if money was no object wouldn't life be fun but you know yeah too fun <laughs> you get everything and you're like i'm still not happy <laughs> you, like, you buy, jerk buy all the use you can <laughs> of like Hold a closet full of like 20 petrols yeah, well you I'm know what so i mean fat and unhealthy so many things money. in this modern world will give you immediate gratification uh that are not necessarily good for your body and mind and that's what one of the things that makes me really proud that we're a part of something that it's one of the activities that's really actually good for you and can uh also help you kind of stave off the less healthy forms of gratification yeah Anyways, why don't you uh, give us the rundown on this amazing baritone? I uh, should have grabbed the spec sheet. This is a baritone that just arrived about a week ago. This is number 34 from our one of our favorite, if not our favorite, uh, custom high-end super luxury ukulele builder, uh, Bruce Petros. We got beautiful red cedar on top. Macassar Ebony on the back and sides. And this is my all time favorite wood combination for various reasons. Um, because of the depth and clarity that you get, it'll probably be this or like a spruce top, even. But with Ebony, you get an insane amount of um, articulation. You know, Mika's favorite word and with the the cedar top you get this uh, not overly boomy um, kind of response on the low end which is nice this paired with the floor covering strings that it comes with hey you get a tone that's very clean very refined A very good amount of sustain. I like this. You don't have to play hard to really get tone out of it. That's uh, well, there is like especially clear, but there's not even a hint of harshness anywhere. Yeah, it's just like full, rich, warm. Even if you dig into it, right? Like, yeah. do these kind of notes that are next to each other and then a dissonance there's good separation yeah every note is easy to hear everything blends well anyways yeah koa binding top and back got this end graph here yeah. Yeah, I like this uh, part of the strap button, that same design that's on the end graph. Beautiful. On the back strip, that's the same design that's used on the, the end graph. Uh, side port, radius fretboard, uh, the rosette here, this. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not coming in for it. Celtic Hearts. Is that what it's called? The um. Mm. So yeah, on the fret dots one or three five. This is cool too. Uh, a lot of people um, don't. I don't think they appreciate the the fret marker on the third fret. That's not a common thing on uh, ukuleles, but Bruce does it, and I'm glad he does. Sometimes I forget how to count to three. Um, you got five, three, five, seven, ten, twelve. 15 and um it goes all the way up on the side 15 17 19 which is cool in case you're all the way up here you gotta remember what fret you're playing we got those on the, the side markers here so uh, koa binding on the fretboard as well petros logo here got the these are fitted with Rubner tuners, very, very smooth, has this brass uh, colored hardware, which looks very elegant. Looks uh, like a vintage instrument. Um, tuning these, it's really effortless. There's really no friction, and it's a very accurate tuner. So if you're doing any kind of micro adjustments, you won't have any issues with that. Number 134 from a good friend, Bruce Petros. Check it out. for how thumpy it is. Like when you're playing uh, all these, uh, I guess, notes together, they're never clashing with each other. Just... If you play it individually, you can hear how warm and rich it is. But when you're playing chords and melody lines and whatever together, it's never, it doesn't mush together. <laughs> if you can think of a better baritone this is the baritone the baritones of baritones or the baritone of baritones it's very good the mother of baritones <laughs> <laughs> sheesh all right so i got another very beautiful petros ukulele this is another one of the cedar the castor ebony combo builds this is number 135 so this is tenor 135 very very beautiful and as we were talking earlier um i noticed um i don't know if it's just this one in particular but i do hear a difference in overall sound from the ones that we've been getting um throughout the years very beautiful cedar top I, I hear a lot more clarity. Everything is like coming out 
more much more cleaner mm. it's like a more refined sound um <laughs> And um, it's great because a lot of like these high-end custom luthiers, some of them just get comfortable and just stop evolving. But I am happy that <laughs> uh, Bruce Petros is still trying to push out as much as he can um, through his instrument. So it's a real masterpiece. And so it's a cedar top, beautiful high-grade cedar wood. If you can look at that, the, uh, the wood grains on this instrument is pretty crazy. Very tight, lots of grains going down, really nice and straight. Um, the rosette is kind of somewhat Hawaiian, Polynesian designed with the honus. In fact, this whole ukulele right here is themed with honu, or turtles, I should say, along the entire instrument. Not just the rosette, but the fretboard as well. Um, starting from frets 3, 5, 7, 10, 12, and 15, um, you have some beautiful family of turtles inlaid on the fretboard the caster ebony for the bridge fretboard face plate and you can see the petros logo inlaid on the top also the ebony theme continues to the back we have a back plate outfitted with um, rubner tuners um, over time they kind of became some of my most favorite tuners I remember when I first looked at it, I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? It looks so different. And then after playing these ukes, um, I'm a big fan. I like how smooth they are. And these are our ukes pretty much fresh out of the cases too. And um, they seem to hold their tune very, very well. Cold binding along this ukulele for the fretboard, top and bottom on the sides. Beautiful Macassar ebony for the back and sides with the... More details of this little center strip coming down the back um, featured on this ukulele too. And one thing I like about all of the Petros Ukes is that most of them, well, the ones that we tend to order come with um, strap buttons on the bottom belt. And he continues to just add more and more detail. Usually when you see a strap button like this with some sort of design, there's most times there's some sort of coating, whether if it's resin or epoxy. And... Um, but this one is actually a piece of wood that has been attached here at the end of the, the strap button. So you, there is a texture to it, which is really, really cool. You don't get that from most uh, strap buttons on the uke. Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention, too, was that um, here on the bridge, you can also see more of the uh, the ukulele theme kind of etched or laser cut, I should say. If that's hand done, that is very impressive. Um, again, side port. Ebon, uh, not, not ebony, we already covered that, but mahogany for the neck. Very beautiful sounding ukulele. Sustain for days. <laughs> Normally I say tone for days, but man, this, just listen to all the overtones. Over Guys, um, comment on the feel, the the neck, the action. Yeah, um, the perfect amount of thickness on this neck. I was gonna say that earlier, and I just told you. Yeah, it's like, is it a little narrow on the nut? Feels 
because it it doesn't feel comfortable uh, uncomfortable at all because like normally when the nut gets narrow you can definitely feel the difference but i think because of the way the neck is shaped it feels like super easy to play i usually focus on uh my thumb placement and this i yeah i don't have any issue which is great oh yeah it's just shy of one and a half so it's about a three eighths. How? What is the bass? Seven sixteenths. It's like in between. Yeah. So it's not quite one point five. But it's it's like wider than the traditional three eighths. Mm. But shy of the full one and a half. But yeah. I wonder if it feels really good. <laughs> It's like I actually like this. the Goldilocks song. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I think if I ever request a custom, you could ask for this type of spacing. I don't know. I I know you prefer like more wide, like a wider nut, right? If you had the choice. I I think this is like the perfect spacing for, like, I guess, my taste. Sometimes I, I feel like the... Perfect spacing is paired with the thickness of the neck. That like factors mm. into the overall feel. I think that's what it is. It's the thickness and the shape. It's really comfortable. That's the crazy part is that it's not just the sound and the build quality that makes these so good. It's the playability. A lot of people would be like, oh, I'm just a beginner, you know, but it's like, but if it makes it easier for you to make, you know, C, F, and G7, little effort i mean if you can afford it and it's something you want and appreciate why not yeah and that's what we spend our time trying to do to every instrument and i mean you know i'll see joel down there spend like half a day trying to get something just right <laughs> like people don't even know like yeah, what don't. we go through but then still it's like nearly impossible to get regular factory made ukes to feel like these do just because of the way they're made but yeah i mean bruce and matt right right when they get to us they feel just amazing oh yeah there's probably very little setup work that's required on these <clears throat> oh. <laughs> together too yeah it, it's not you know things aren't overlapping and clashing it's just it's going together like just when we played the um i guess intro chords to the, oh the, yeah yeah wow, that was nice this is the perfect ukulele for duets i would say so or perfect perfect for anything basically in my opinion but that baritone. Did you? You didn't get a chance to like fully play it, yeah? Not yet. Not yet. You wanna yeah, hopefully, but trade. hopefully, see. <laughs> You're gonna love this one. You probably played it already, right? This is on a, the thinner side, but not uncomfortably. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, it's, it is thinner, right? I'm not, I'm not imagining things. The neck width. Yeah. And uh, what is it? Depth? Is that? The depth of the neck is it's perfect. Yeah. It's got a nice C to it too. It's, it's not like one of the like sometimes uh slimmer necks can be kind of D shaped and flatter mm -hmm. on the, yeah. this one. And then what's this part called again? The volute. The volute. That is always in the right place too. And it's not too extreme to where it feels weird. Right? Yeah. yeah. Soft. Pure elegance. Very elegant. <laughs> Fantastic. Clay, give us a sample on that berry. This is the oh, berry wow. best. Oh, 
Wait, sorry, that was that almost sounded like Ian's Nightmare no. <laughs> This is the Pavarotti baritone. <laughs> oh, let's see. This is a store. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs> no, no I'm not, it's not going to be at the store. I promise. It's, it like won't the, be. Though. The fast, like, <laughs> like anything. If you have to do like fast wow. picking up, <laughs> it's really easy. Wow. Hmm. Even the string tension is perfect. I, I think the 35 is good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think this one can go a little bit higher. Yeah. yeah. Bring out a little bit more boom. Kind of, uh, with, with that Thomas stick, it's kind of a mellower vibe. Yeah. But yeah, you could definitely get more punch out of a gold. Okay, Corey, give us a sample on that one. Okay. Um. have a thicker G it still has a good amount of punch mm -hmm. like you, you have to just hit it a little harder but it's not that a b better instrument will make you a better player but the inspiration and joy it gives you eventually will 
Yeah. Definitely does. So luckily for us, this isn't the, the end of the road for new Petros. It's, we have an Two instrument that, that we've never gotten from him before. I don't know if he's if it's a new new for him, but it's definitely new for us, the tenor long neck. Oh. oh. Yeah. That and an amazing concert. Oh, I, I thought it was just two. Uh, I thought it was two tenors. I don't know. It was a long neck tenor. Nineteen yeah. inch, eighteen inch. I think it's nineteen, and I don't know. Did you guys tune these earlier? Because um, that one, he said, he said um, preferably a step lower, so it's like tuned a step down. But I thought it had pretty relaxed tension to where, mm. okay, um, it could go up to standard, but. I think right now it's in that uh what f b flat whatever you know the oh, yeah. step down kind of deal oh, preferred tenor tuning sorry Claire. <laughs> yeah, yeah actually. On the long neck tenor yeah <laughs> oh it sucks i wanted to play b flat <laughs> there's a lot of clarity that's coming out of that and even though it's tuned a whole step down the thing with this tuning is the mid-range response is always better concert it's a tenor and a concert body <laughs> it's, like concert, but it's, like really rich and it's like super warm it sounds like a different song and, and just it sounds very refreshing song. yeah so different in a really good way wow it's like okay. uh in between a tenor and baritone right yeah but more of a baritone i would say is it um it's just a step down yeah feel like an ukulele but that's not a bad thing at all
this is the very first long neck tenor that we got from uh, Petros. This is a part of the same batch that we played uh, the baritone and tenor. Um, got beautiful redwood on top. Clara walnut back and sides. Beautiful side port. There's a... This is an interesting shape too. There's an arm bevel. Which, I mean, Petros Aquila is already very comfortable to play. This is just an extra bonus. Um, just because. Which is... Oh. Yeah. Wow. The shape is... It's a little different than what we're usually used to, but... So perfectly done, too. Jeez. Got the nice Honu right here on the strap button. End graph. That same design continues up on the back strip. Like the coloring and the depth of this cloud walnut. Really curly on the sides, too. Got, got butternut on the neck. Fingerboard. This is um, one of my other favorite woods as far as um, the, the appearance of it because it's so unique it's a snake wood on here for the fretboard bridge and on the faceplate the purfling it's uh, the maori design beautifully done as as always the uh binding side port um Side part also has uh, binding on it. This is cherry, and it is pretty, pretty cherry looking. <laughs> Anyways, um, slotted headstock. Andrew said we had one. I don't, I don't think I remember, but um, it's the same. In fact, I think this is smaller than the regular uh, solid headstocks. Beautiful shape. Uh, Rubner tuners. The uh, buttons on here are a little different. But still got that vintage look to it. Uh, still very smooth. We got fluorocarbon strings on here. Uh, this is tuned to a whole step down. This is like capoing the third fret of a guitar. And you get this sound that you're playing an ukulele. But when I'm hearing it in the headphones, A little confusing because I feel like I'm, I'm I'm hearing a baritone, but it feels like a regular tenor, um, and it's a long neck tenor too. It doesn't feel like it has a 19 inch scale. Like when you're playing like a kamaka, long neck, you can you you can you notice the extra tension. Yeah, tension too, and the, the scale like this. Well, you might notice it more if you go up to standard tuning. It's pretty relaxed as it is, which um. If you wanted to tune that GCEA, you could. And if you wanted it to feel lighter, you could go with a little bit lighter of a set. Yeah. Like if you put on, say, the Eucologic Soft Tensions at regular GCEA, that would be fine. But this has, like, its own quality. And if you have, like, other nice tenors, this would be kind of a, a different this would beautiful be a good, sound. Right? Yeah, a good collection for your arsenal of ukuleles. If you... Wow. And because it's only uh, another step and a half from regular baritone tuning, pretty sure you can get away with um, putting baritone strings on here and getting a full-on baritone sound if you, if you need it. Yep, go a little heavier on the gauge and just go with regular baritone, which the original Kamaka baritone was 19-inch scale. Yeah. That's what um, Benny, I think, plays with. Yeah. That's they had him. Uh, he had them. When he had Cole out build him a baritone it was 19 inch and then uh same uh, i think his kamaka yeah his old it's kind of a must for him right if he's doing this, uh... <laughs> yeah. it's just like muscle memory for that. It's like 19 inch with the absolute thinnest neck possible <laughs> this neck too super comfortable doesn't um well what's it called it tapers is that what it when it gets thicker this one not 
so much. As you get up here, it's still... There's some next I play that it, it gets so girthy up here that playing after the 12th fret or even up from the, the 10th fret can get tricky, but this is it's allowing me to play chords I wouldn't usually play up here. I'm still confused. I, I, I don't know what this is, but it's great. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Jeez. It's a completely different world because it's not a half a step down. It's a full step down in tuning. And, ah, it's just I'm not familiar with, like, sounds pretty the, the perfect. Pitch, though, yeah. huh? Just think B flat. It's like a different voice, right? Because yeah, now you get like, all that open voicing from just keeping it in standard tuning. Yeah, like B flat. In in your head, you'd think yeah, like B flat. But then when you're actually playing it and feeling, it, it's like this is something else. Yeah. that like a step lower yeah. it just kind of gives it a it's completely new completely yeah. different from anything that we 
usually play? This is crazy. <laughs> kind of mind blowing. It's also like, I'm guessing that he built that you specifically for the tuning. Do you think? Did, yeah, well, he... I mean, that's how he sent it with the okay, to, cool. to be tuned like that, you know. I mean, like I said, it can go up or it can go down, but um, as you can see, like with what Corey's experiencing, it it's pretty amazing at, you know, that step down. Oh, yeah. B flat tuning. And that's probably the reason why for that uh, wood combination and everything. Slotted head style, stock versus mm -hmm. the standard one. Maybe all of that was like specifically because of that. <laughs> Pretty sure he built with intentions, yeah. I think Corey could fill up the rest of the podcast right now just noodling on it, but Yeah. It must sound like like I'm playing a different song. It's so, <laughs> so in interesting. You gotta that, try what it. Is that box <laughs> piece? Um, it's the Presto, Presto? in uh, usually G minor, and we're in F minor. F minor. What played those melodies in the original? Uh, was that violin for or for violin? Yeah. yeah. play all the songs we usually do <laughs> in this and it's so unfamiliar I'll just play everything <laughs> like, <I'll step> <laughs> Glaze, like okay <laughs> i'll just transpose okay. right here yeah. little, little little people know we have to learn how to play our songs in three different keys <laughs> <laughs> even, uh, when you do uh canadian tuning it's even more different than than that. At oh least yeah, with that, it's that's still, the step up, right? Yeah, like a Can familiar this canadian tuning. <laughs> This will be it could with a different history. I mean, it, it, it definitely could, but yeah. Well, if, if the tension is already good. If you go up, then it's like it's gonna yeah. keep creeping up as you try to go back down. Yeah. I want the strings to snap. <laughs> it's crazy. The the string tension. It's really high, but it's still really easy to play. It is. <laughs> Some folks that can't hear the difference, so to, to prove it that they're both tuned differently, why don't we just hold a C chord and just strum it together and see yeah. how much it costs us? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> so he's playing C, I have to play B flat. <laughs>
crazy. Holy crap. Uh, wow, this is a beautiful chord voicing. You know what's really interesting is hearing uh, Byron Yer Sui and Benny Chong play. Yeah. Because they're both in re-entrant. But Benny's in, but Benny's in uh, re-entrant baritone tuning. And then Dr. Byron is in, He's in this tuning. B-flat 6. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's why it's so hard for just like if you're in standard tuning, it's so hard to play with them because like if you get lost to where you are, there's no visual reference. Because <laughs> what they're holding is not Jeez. what you, you should be. <laughs> yeah, like the baritone might be a little bit more familiar to transposing, but then you look over at Byron and yeah, you're just like, well, it's like oh. Yeah. oh, sorry. That's why when I was like in high school and they used to tell me, come jam with us, I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I don't, like, I don't think it's a good idea. Like, I would love to, but there's no way I can sit in with you guys. <laughs> Plus, they'll always be throwing things at each other, like crazy inversions and like weird stuff. You know? Yeah. I don't know what they're going to play. Man. So. Clay's got one of the best concerts I've ever played. Oh yeah, probably one of the best concerts I've ever played too. Um, this is a another ebony, a Macaster ebony, back and sides with the beautiful cedar top. This is the concert version. We had uh, a few ukuleles to come in this wood combination, and they each kind of have their own theme. This one was inspired by our Polynesian friends all the way in New Zealand. This is Maori. Um, inspired so you have the maori uh t spearheads over here going around for the entire body as far as the binding the rosette it's very beautiful um we got turtles on the fretboard that's board. the first time i've seen that design for his rosette yeah. isn't that awesome i think it's beautiful yeah. i i would i wish that like like luthiers would use this type of design more frequently because i think it's cool it's really really nice it's um outside of the box as far as like rope binding and putting um you know like more um i guess you could say stuff that you've you've seen before because everything that bruce does is incredible but this is really nice um this concert does not sound too concert ish it's kind of like halfway uh, sounding like a tenor which is a great thing because there's a lot of people out there that love the sound of a tenor but the concert is more playable for them it's more comfortable so this would be a match made in heaven for you if you're one of those it's an incredible sounding ukulele beautiful tone very fat warm i mean and the playability of this is really good because if i don't think concert i wouldn't be able to really feel or hear the difference a whole lot Castor Ebony for pretty much the entire instrument as far as team goes, bridge, faceplate, and yeah, the Ebony fingerboard, mahogany neck, Rubner tuners, some of our favorites, cold binding, beautiful everything. You got even have like the the uh, spear design coming down the center strip in the back, uh, beautiful Honu on the bottom bout as far as the Strap button goes and. Yeah. And it's very symmetrical too. You know? Yeah. Super sy symmetrical. Very nicely book matched. <clears throat> Gorgeous.
in serious concert. Incredible. Wow. <laughs> Perfect for like a good finger style ukulele. Yeah. Or taking solos on because it has this nice pop. The notes yeah. just jump out in front. Because that's kind of what you need when you wanna when you wanna dig in. Well wow. it's it's like Petros are naturally like really deep sounding. Mm -hmm. So with that concert size wood combination, it's a lot deeper than a normal concert. Yes. But yeah, it's also a little bit more focused than the tenor. Mm -hmm. So I it so. kind of has its own greatness. Really should, rich. Should probably sound really good with the low G too. Mm. But then I like this really familiar ukulele sound with the re-entrant tuning. It's like it's familiar, but it's it's a huge wall of tone. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. This is the best sounding concert we've ever had. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was really feeling that way too. It's kind of a bold statement, but yeah, yeah it, it's <laughs> you like know? it's like it had, I gotta take my hat off to Bruce. It's like with this thing, it's like what? I mean, I I have a feeling I said that about this other concert, you know, fairly recently. But this is what I'm gonna have in my head of what a concert would be. This should sound light if you're gonna oh, do it in a custom level like it's a, this <laughs> it's a high bar to hold them Ooh, to i know but it's great if you like concert ukuleles and you want to get one of the best ones in the world 100 <laughs> percent. yeah okay when Corey gets back from the bathroom i'm gonna have you uh him try that too but here let me put this tenor long neck okay. in your hands It's just like, I could, I, for some strange reason, the reason why the voicings are with this tuning. That's not an epic out here. Oh my god. Like, you could play, like, different chords back to back that normally wouldn't work. But then I just took the risk and I was just like, oh, it didn't sound as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> like... <laughs>
shouldn't, you know. It shouldn't work like this. It shouldn't <laughs> work. It's not supposed to work, <laughs> but it does. Because of the voice. I'm happy about it. <laughs> That's such a glow. Oh my god. Wow, this is, yeah, this is nice. It. Yeah, I was playing it earlier. That's ex exactly what I was thinking. It's like just a smaller tenor. It's not a, not what uh, you would expect. I mean, it's completely different from what you would expect. I, I, a country I it, song. Yeah, I mean, it sounds different than the Petros tenor, but yeah, I mean, and then there's like concerts that have like good projection, but there's kind of a harsher quality. Yeah, yeah. 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 This doesn't have like usually a muddy kind well, of mid range, right? I mean, this also manages to be extremely warm without being muddy at all. Yeah, yeah. So. it's a very delicate. It's like it was like just all flat, but then the high frequencies are just spiked up a little bit, so you get that nice clarity. Impressive. 